Oh, hey everyone, this is Mr. John. You caught me at a great time because I'm just adding a few adding a few finishing touches to this painting I've been working on. And this is a great time because I actually want to show you some painting techniques that I've been using. And uh, you may have gone to your local Chicago Public Library to get a Summer Learning Challenge Start With Art Grab and Go Kit featuring painting with watercolors. So if you did get that kit, then you probably have all, all of the materials that you need to uh, do this along with me. But if you don't, that's okay. I will show you what you need in order to um, do some of the techniques I'm going to show you. First, you need some watercolor paper. We have some, um, we included some nice watercolor paper in the kits that we are providing at Chicago Public Library. We also provided these nice um, eight color watercolor kits. Uh, these came with a little paintbrush and you can see uh, the eight colors there. Uh, you'll also need a little container of water. I actually have two containers of water because you're going to want to keep your brush clean during this painting process. Um, I'm also going to show you a technique that uses salt. So here I have two different kinds of salt. I actually have some uh, regular table salt and this is actually salt that you use outside during the winter time. Um, so I'll show you the different effects that the different types of salt have. Um, you also need a crayon. Uh, this will work with any color crayon, but um, the effect that I'm going to show you is really cool with a white crayon. So I just have a white crayon today. And you also need some paper towels to keep things clean and to uh, clean off your brush. So uh, just a little tip. We did give you these large sheets of uh, watercolor paper in your kits, but um, you may want to use some different paper that you have at the house while you're still uh, experimenting with the techniques I'm going to show you. And then uh, you might want to save the nice watercolor paper until you're ready to create a complete composition. Another tip is that you might want to actually cut your large sheet of paper in half or in quarters. Um, the little landscape I painted is actually a quarter sheet. So, and I thought this was a nice size for a nice little painting. So um, I'm actually gonna use some half sheets to show you a few techniques. And the first technique I'm gonna show you is called wet on wet. But before I show you that, I just wanna show you what it looks like when we just kind of paint normally with the watercolor. So basically over here, I'm getting my paintbrush wet with water and then I'm just gonna dip it into one of these colors. Here I'm using orange. And basically I'm just adding water and kind of rubbing that into the paint to get the water paint, watercolor going. After I do that for a minute, I'm just gonna apply some to the paper here. And this is kind of what it looks like when you just paint directly onto the paper after getting the paint wet. The technique I'm going to show you first is actually called wet on wet, which refers to wetting the paper and then using wet paint. So to get this effect going, I'm just going to clean off my brush, get my brush wet with just some water, and then I'm going to wet a little area of the paper. It's hard to see, but I'm just going to wet little square here so I can actually see the water I'm kind of looking at it from an angle but I can see the water in kind of like a little square here after that I'm going to wet my paintbrush again wet one of the colors here I'm going into the blue I'm gonna get it pretty wet and then I'm going to paint directly into the area where I just wet it with water. And you can see already, the watercolors are running through the area where there was water. And that's a really cool, beautiful effect. And I think this is kind of a look that people think about a lot, think of a lot when uh, they think of traditional watercolor. So it's wet paint going onto wet water um, and it created a beautiful effect already, but I'm gonna actually show you how you can use this technique to blend some colors in a really cool way also. So I'm gonna clean my brush again and then go into another color. Here I'm gonna go into the yellow. I'm gonna get that pretty wet as well. I'm gonna add a little more water here. So now I have the yellow and I'm gonna go back in and paint into the wet area. Actually, I'm gonna to try to get this a little more wet. But you can already see the yellow paint is running into the blue paint because of the water. And see, you can already see it mixing a little. It's turning green a little bit here. 
around the edges, which is really cool. I'm gonna actually help that along by getting my brush a little bit wet with water and just kind of painting in between the blue and the yellow paint. And see, you can see it mixing into green a little better here. I think this looks really cool. So I'm just gonna kind of like blend this in a little more. Ooh, see? You can see the green come out even more. So this is the wet on wet technique. And I really like this one. Um, it's important to really let this dry before you uh, move your painting around. If I was to uh, lift it up now while it's still really wet, it would start to run. And maybe that's an effect that you do want at some point. But right now, I'm just gonna leave it flat until it dries. So that is the wet on wet technique. And I'm just showing you a few techniques um, that you can try out, but there's so many more techniques and then you really will just be able to take some of the techniques I show you and whatever techniques you uh, might already know and put them together into uh, a final composition. So now I'm gonna show you a really cool technique that adds some really nice texture to painting. So this is called a salt texture. Again, I showed you earlier that we had some table salt and also some uh, sidewalk salt. So what I'm gonna do is just wet my brush with some fairly clean water, pick up some paint. I'm not gonna wet the uh, paper first for this time, but then I'm gonna basically just paint a little square of paint here. I'm using this nice red color. And then I'm just gonna take a little pinch of salt and then I'm gonna go over it Sprinkle this gently, lightly on top of the paint. And you can see what's already starting to happen. The salt is actually creating a nice little texture there. I actually have not tried this yet with the sidewalk salt, so I'm gonna try it now. We're gonna see what happens together for the first time. So I'm just gonna do another square here in purple this is a nice purple color i think this works this technique works pretty well if the paint is fairly wet but not super super wet so this sidewalk salt is just kind of like a chunkier salt Let's see i'm gonna sprinkle some of that over might be a little too chunky Ooh, that's a big chunk right there let me see, I'm gonna try to pick up some of the smaller pieces. That's pretty cool. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna try it with like a much wetter paper. So I am actually going to wet the paper ahead of time. And really, I just wanna encourage you all to uh, try different techniques, uh, experiment a little and see what happens when you uh, try these different techniques at home. So actually, I'm gonna do wet on wet with the green paint. Let me get that a little bit more colored. And then let's see, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of the table salt and then a little bit of the sidewalk salt. Oh, see? Actually, it worked pretty well using the wet on wet technique. And you can see how the salt kind of causes the uh, color to move away from the salt. So that's the salt uh, texture technique. I'm gonna actually put this aside for now and we're, we'll check back on this later. Whoops. So I'm gonna move that up here. Whoops, I'm gonna grab my other half sheet of paper. And now I'm gonna show you a cool technique called crayon resist. So I showed you earlier, I have a little white crayon here. And basically for crayon resist, you wanna draw something on your paper and it's gonna be hard to see because we're using a white crayon on white paper. But you can draw an image, you can draw a pattern. I'm drawing a little secret um, drawing right here. But now, in order to reveal your image, basically, you're gonna wanna take 
some paint. Whoops. The green's mixing a little with the yellow, but that's okay. And I kind of drew around here. If you uh, look at your paper from an angle, you can actually see the crayon, even though it's white on white. And then, then I just paint over where I drew. And slowly, my image will be revealed. So you guys can see what I drew kind of. You know what, I'm gonna add some, oops, I'm gonna add some orange, just so we can see that a little better on camera. See, so I drew a little smiley guy with some eyebrows. So you can do a lot of cool things with that technique. That's crayon resist. And basically, as the name suggests, you're using the crayon to resist the paint. So wherever you draw on the paper with the white crayon, the paint will not stick to, and it'll stay white. And you can do some really cool things with that. So that's crayon resist. Now I'm gonna show you a te technique called dry brush. So basically, as the name suggests, you're gonna draw onto the paper, I'm sorry, paint onto the paper with a rather dry brush. So you still have to wet your brush to begin with uh, to get your paint wet. So here I'm just picking up some black paint. But now what you're gonna wanna do is dab your paintbrush onto the paper towel to remove some of the moisture. But now you'll see when you paint onto your paper, with the dry brush, it's easier to create little lines. See? That's the dry brush technique. And just to remind you what it looks like when you don't use the dry brush technique, I'm just gonna paint onto here with a really wet brush, see? There you go. So on here, you can see, I just added some plain water to my brush just to keep this paint a little wet, even though it's on the paper already. So that was the dry brush technique. I'm actually gonna show you a little bonus technique that is not on the instruction sheet that you uh, may have received with your kit from Chicago Public Library. And this is basically a way to create some cool textures um, with your watercolor. So basically what you're want, gonna wanna do is uh, Pick up some paint with your brush, just paint a little area. And this is kind of a subtle technique. Um, I do really like it even though the effects are pretty subtle, but I think this is a really good technique to experiment with. And basically for this technique, you can use whatever you have around the house um, that might create a cool texture here. This is one of my favorites. This is some little bubble wrap. Uh, I also really like, oops, I also really like the, um, effect that scrunched up paper bag has. I also tried it with a little foil. Um, this didn't work super well, but I'll still show you because it, it could work out a little better for you. So basically I painted a little square of color and this works well if you let it dry a tiny bit. But basically you're gonna take your material, scrunch it up a little, just kind of dab it onto your paint, see? And you can see looks quite different from where I originally painted. And it's just basically adding some texture. So, so that was a paper bag. I'm gonna um, go right here with another color so I can show you the bubble wrap. See, this is pretty wet. I would actually want to let this dry a tiny bit before doing this, but um, just so I can show you, I'm gonna do it now anyway. So I really like that one. And this is just a cool way to add some neat textures to your paintings. Whoops. Oh, see, that was actually a cool effect. Kind of going back and forth between the two colors. Oh, wow. I did that by accident, but I actually really like how that looks. 
Now I'm going to um, go down here with some red. And then try it with the foil. So you'll see here I have a little foil scrunched up. I'm gonna try not to scrunch it too much. Well, it's creating some texture there. Okay. Well, I kind of like that too. That came out better than I thought. But again, you can experiment at home with whatever materials you have to try to find what makes some really cool textures. Um, that was the last technique I'm gonna show you today. But if you put these all together, you can create your own composition. So here you'll see the painting I was working on earlier and I'll show you the different techniques I use. So here on the road, you can see the salt textures. It's kind of dry now. So if you want, after you do your salt textures, you can actually um, kind of rub off the salt. You don't have to do this because it looks kind of cool if you just leave the salt on there. But if you want to rub away some of it, it still looks pretty cool. Um, up here, you can see I used the wet on wet technique and I uh, blended some blue into some purple. Here, I did the crayon resist. And here, you can see I created a little snow capped mountain with the crayon resist. Um, it's pretty subtle, but uh, I use the textures here on this side of the grass. And here on this side of the grass, I use the dry brush technique. And that's kind of what I was uh, gonna finish up with. So it's gonna get some more brown paint on here. Take some of that off. And I'm gonna finish my painting by doing some dry brush on this side, just to give this a little more depth. But again, I wanna encourage you to do some experimenting. Um, I was doing some things earlier where I uh, layered different colors on top of each other. So this is what I showed you, but once this dries, I might go back over this with some like I might go over the orange with some yellow to see how that looks, or I might go over the red here with some blue to see if that will turn purple. But again, it's really up to you how you want to use these techniques to create your own masterpiece. So I hope you all have a really great time using the watercolor kits. We would really love to see what you make at home. So please, if you want to post any of your images on social media this summer, please use the hashtag, hashtag CPLKids, or please email us at cplkids at shypublib.org to share some of your images. Thanks so much. I hope you have a great time starting with art this summer. Bye.